Call upon his name. 
Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Rejoice in his marvelous works that he hath done. Hallelujah. His wondrous judgments of his mouth. All the marvelous works which he has done. The wondrous judgments of his mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama Gela Mana Angel Mambolo Boro Satya Ramandera. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bevalana Mangele Rumambo Vavalando Seru Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. By the Holy Ghost that you have given. Hallelujah. By the working of your mighty love. By the Holy Ghost that you have given. Oh God, by your mighty love. Lord Jesus, we worship you. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. By the Holy Spirit that you have given. <laughs> By the glorious working of your love. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Ha <laughs> ha. Woohoo! Lord Jesus, we worship you. Just lift your hands towards heaven. We worship you. Say, Lord Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. Say it again. Lord Jesus, we worship you. 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 Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we worship you. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we worship Hallelujah. You. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Oh, God, we adore you for the life that you have given. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we worship you for the life that you have given. Oh, God, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord our God. We worship you for the love that you have given. Lord, we worship you. Woohoo! We worship you. Blessed. 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 Blessed 
Lord Jesus, we worship. Lord Jesus, we worship you. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I yield myself to you, Lord. Say, and I yield myself to you, Lord. And I yield myself to you, Lord. Yield myself to you, Lord. Take complete control. Take complete control. And I yield myself to you, Lord. And I yield myself to you, Lord. Cause me, Lord, to know. Cause me, Lord, to know. And I yield myself to you, Lord. And I yield myself to you, Lord. Take complete control. Take complete control. And I yield myself to you, Lord. Cause me, Lord. Cause me, Lord, to know. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much for the work of grace that's been given to us that we may know you and walk with you. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus that every person in this place will come to know you in that way, oh God, that you've made it possible. Through the giving of your only begotten Son, through the giving of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Glory, glory and honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can be seated. Let me just let me spend some time talking to you and Then we'll, we just believe together that God will do a work in your life that's impossible for you to even imagine, much less accomplish for yourself. You know, Father has given us an opportunity to be able to know Him in a way that it can't even be expressed other than to say that we just become one with them, that we are able and privileged to interact with all of His fullness. And it's hard to really get people to understand that, really, because they're under the influence of the God of this world, the Spirit that now works in the children of disobedience to some degree or other. Either they're bound by Him because they've not been made alive in Christ Jesus, or they are impacted to some degree by his influences that he has through all the various different medias and television, radio, your friends, your boss, popular opinions, circumstance, situations of life. But one of the ways that I can begin to express what I want to say is everybody gets to 
minister or, or impact the lives of others based upon how much they know the Lord. On the de out of the depths of the, their, their fellowship and relationship with the Lord Jesus. If you look through the history of the church, you find people along the way that have made huge impact. That has happened out of, and that took place out of their relationship with the Lord Jesus. There's men, there are men like, I could just say like A.A. A. Allen, who began to cry out to God as a young preacher in small assemblies of God church, just a few people in it. Began to cry out and ask God to use him. And... Um, he really took a hold of a relationship with the Lord, and out of that relationship with the Lord, a whole generation was impacted. Nation, the nations were impacted. Why? Because they got to see somebody out of their personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ begin to minister to people, and blind saw, deaf heard, crippled walk. The presence of God would be, could be felt. You know, I, I, can, I can think about so many different people and even people that are alive today. Talk about Reinhardt, Bonnke. Out of his just personal relationship with the Lord, out of his hunger to know the Lord, out of his desire to do it God's way and have God's presence in his life, to submit himself fully to the Holy Ghost and follow Jesus, he was developed in that heart and desire. You guys want to fix the microphone? Just turn it down a little bit or whatever. Um, out of that heart and, and out of that desire, he began once again to impact his generation. It, the impact influenced the nations around him. The biggest crusades on the planet took place. They didn't just take place because God decided arbitrarily he was going to give a gift to one person and not to another. That's ridiculous. He's opened up the opportunity of fellowship with him to all men, everyone. Doesn't matter who you, if you're, if you're a Scythian in Paul's day, was with the wickedest people on the planet. So imagine the wickedest culture that you can imagine. There's no difference between them and a Jew. There's no difference. If you come from the most vile culture, I don't know, what, what, what would we say? San Francisco? Even from San Francisco. San Franciscans. I don't know. What would be equivalent to Sc Scythians today? What would be the vilest, most anti-God nation, wicked culture that you could imagine? God's made the opportunity for all men. Anyone can come in. And the worst possible thing that can happen is, and, and I think more than anything else, what happens is people get stuck in religion. They get stuck in religion. And in their religion, you know, they just kind of straddle the different, they straddle between their own way, God's way, and, and a love for the things of this, of, of the world versus love for things of the kingdom. And sometimes it doesn't even go that far with people in religion. Not even just a love for the world and a love for the things, a love for the world and also a love for the things of the kingdom, but it's just seeking their own interest, taking care of themselves. They sow to the flesh instead of sowing to the spirit. And all the, there's, my goodness, there's probably so many different things, so many different snares that Satan uses for, to keep people from moving on. You know, you could categorize them as the pride of life, the seafulness of riches. You could categorize them as the lust of the flesh. You could categorize them as various different forms of rebellion and personal interest, less to the eye. But what happens when you get just so earnest for the things of the Spirit of God, you can't have it any other way in your life. Nothing else even matters. What happens as you've been faithfully and consistently 
out of that desire that God gives us, you begin to touch heaven. And heaven begins to touch you. I know that so many people in the 90s, they were impacted by the fire of God that came upon Rodney Howard Brown to come stir up the churches in America to prepare him for the coming revival. And somebody said, well, you know, the, the Lord just did a special work of grace in him. Well, you know what happened? He got desperate. He got desperate. And out of that faithfulness and out of that commitment and crying out to God, out of that relationship with the Lord, he touched heaven, heaven touched him, and because heaven touched him, he was able to be a, 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 a minister, an instrument of the things that he had received in his fellowship with Jesus. And I wanted just to encourage you today that the Lord has that for everyone. You, you're going to have to understand that you've got a lot of various different enemies coming out against you to stop you. You've got discouragement coming out against you to stop you. You've got interest in this life coming out against you to stop you. You've got disasters and events and circumstances of disappointment and all the rest of the stuff coming out against you to stop you. But when you, all of a sudden, you, be, you make up your mind that you have no other... You have one desire. David was able to minister to his generation and impact his generation and generations for 3,000 years. Because it's been 3,000 years since he was alive. Out of the fact that he had one desire, one. I mean, you talk about person had the opportunity to be distracted with a whole lot of different things, that would have been David. He was the king. He had before him, and he was the king under, in, a, in a time period when God had given him a special ability and a special anointing to overthrow every, every obstacle, overthrow, overthrow every enemy that would stand, uh, try to stand against the inheritance that God had given to the nation of Israel, which had been effective against that nation since Joshua had brought them into their inheritance. They had not fully possessed all that God had given to them and promised to them. But what happened? David gets this anointing. Out of what? Out of his personal relationship with the Lord. In secret. What goes on when no one else is around? You know, Father, there's no time that Father looks at you and I most earnestly. And most, with most interest as he does when no one else is around. And you say, is it really that much, is it really that important to, to God what I do or what I don't do? Yeah, it really is. It really is. He loves you so much. He's so desired to have a relationship with each person individually that he was willing to take his only begotten son, his, and, and, and you know, if we, we can begin to take it to one level, to the next level, to the next level, because only begotten son, firstborn son, son of his heart, the dearest, most closest relationship to him who, we, who was only could be known and understood as the word of God hidden in the bosom of the father. And ultimately the word became flesh and became as his only begotten son. And he was willing because he's so father so desperately interested in me and in you. He sacrificed him up for the sins of us all to bring to us the gospel message, the good news. What good news? The good news that we no longer have to live under the power of sin and death anymore. The good news that we no longer have to be under the reign of the powers of demonic spirits that having been delivered out of the hands of our enemies, we may serve God in righteousness and holiness all the days of our life. The good news that now Christ Jesus is Savior and Lord and King. The good news. And uh, uh, we want people to be able to hear that. We especially want the people of the household of faith to hear that. You know, let me just say this. It doesn't matter what influence you have. It doesn't matter how big or how small. How small it is. How faithful are you? Because God will develop you in it. I remember, I remember the Lord was doing this work in my life. And 
there wasn't that many people in the church. You know, probably about as many as there are now. And uh, I'm going to just, you know, the Lord to give me some instruction. I'd have everybody just raise their hands. And then, then as everyone would just raise their hands, the power of God would begin to flow and beauty of his presence would begin to be manifested for me in a way that I'd never been, that I had never experienced. And then uh, Tim Hall, Tim would be here at the end of May. Tim Hall asked me to come to, to Papua New Guinea with him. And, you know, he kept telling me about the Friday night of the, of the, of the crusade and I thought on the Friday night it was the biggest night and, you know, people, because people were going to come from all over and there was already about 30,000 plus people there. And then the day before, Tim said, and, oh, by the way, you're the one who's ministering on the Friday night. And um, I didn't prepare a sermon. I need to. I was, I was going to minister out of what was already given me. He would try to, at the last minute to have something. You're not going to get, you're not going to really have a lot at the, you're, well, you're going to have exactly what you already got when you're preparing at the last minute. You're not going to have anything more. Nothing less. But what, out of that which you know, out of that which you receive from heaven, it's from that that you can minister. And um, so I got up on the platform, it's Friday night. There are more people that can be numbered. I don't know how many people. Multitudes and multitudes. I heard numbers around 50, 60,000. I don't know. No one, I didn't see anybody counting heads. I just can tell you, it was a whole lot more than the few I was used to ministering to. <laughs> but there was no difference. It was no difference. The same, the same power of God, the same glory of God. I, I stood on the platform after just sharing for a little while. I asked everyone to lay the, lift up their hands. And just as, just as I had done so many times in the ministry, I just said, everybody just lift your hands towards heaven. Same glory, same anointing, same presence of the Lord was there. Power of God began to fall on the ministers that were on the platform. The head of the assemblies of God, other people, the person who was understood or viewed as the national evangelist for the nation. Joseph Maru, Joseph Walters, and others. Power of God began to fall upon the people, the thousands of people. No, you could hear a pin drop. There was nothing. It was silence. Silence. You could hear. All you could hear was people dropping. That was it. You hear people falling. People then began to rush up. Because they wanted it, they were so excited they wanted to tell about the miracles that God was doing in their life. Woman comes running up with a ba her child was ten years old, was born mute, never spoke a word in her life. You didn't have to wonder if the woman was telling the truth, the ecstasy, the the joy, the the shock. The state of being just so overwhelmed, the presence of God all over her face as she's told about how her baby was speaking, and there's the baby, the mute talk, the deaf hear, the blind see. Just out of whatever relationship you've allowed God to begin to produce within your life, He's going to come in that place, that room that you've given to Him, and He's going to be make, He's going to begin to make Himself known. If you will just give yourself to that realm, if you won't let the influences of this God of this world, who is, a, who is your enemy, who is a deceiver, who, whose purpose is to destroy your soul in hell, who is, is excellent at his craft, he's, 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 he's a master of his disguise and of his deception, of all of his other interests that have nothing to do with the purpose, that somehow God's people who should be smarter, who should have more insight, who should have more more discernment, who should have more wisdom, who should have more knowledge, should be able to see real quickly his interference and say, no, nah, I know what you want. I know why you are the enemy of my relationship. You're trying to bring me back into a prison that Jesus died to deliver me from.
It's so easy to walk with God because even though we allow deception, we allow the things and distractions of the enemy to carry us away, the Holy Ghost continues to wrestle with us and plead with us and God continues to call us and there's the blood of Jesus Christ that's there to cleanse us if we would call upon the name of the Lord. You know, there's this great movement. People want to begin to function the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits and, and, and walk in signs, wonders and miracles, which of course... That's what we're supposed to do. But you know, knowledge and, and wisdom and discernment is supposed to work in our own life first. And knowledge and wisdom and discernment would keep us from all these distractions and all this interference that's being run against us and all this discouragement, all this dis disappointment, all these other interests that would try to hold us back from that which is most important, the Father. When no one else is around, well, what am I doing? I said, Lord, I, I, I've got to know you. Oh, God, send your fire. Send your fire. Why? Because I want my life to be an offering up unto you. I want my life to be an offering. I want to fully interact with you in every way. And of course, that's what the fire is all about in the Old Testament. An offering was put upon the altar when the fire of God came and consumed the offering from off of the altar. Then you knew that it was acceptable at that moment in time you were beginning to interact with God. And that's why Elijah said, let, the, let God, the God who answers by fire, let him be God. There are many gods right now. Did you know that? Did you know that the worship of many gods did not end 2,000 years ago? I look around, I watch people all over the place worshiping gods. Some people worshiping the gods of money. Jesus said it. He said, you cannot serve God and mammon. So when he said that, he placed materialism on the same level as any other idol when he said that. When he contrasted God and mammon, he clearly was contrasting idolatry. Covet and of course, Paul said covetousness is idolatry. People running after the, the things, the comforts. And I will call them creature comforts because it belongs to the creatures. <laughs> you know. But oh, what happens when we all of a sudden esteem one thing more important than anything else? His anointing. His glory. His manifest presence. I was hearing a statistic that... that it was alarming. I'm not going to tell you the percentages. I don't even want to give the percentages, but I'm per it, was, it was huge, making it clearly stating the fact that this was a lot of, there were a lot of preachers doing this. That they didn't even open their Bible but to prepare for a sermon. No, that's the leadership. We're on earth. They're, we're on earth. Then are the people of God. You know, God is holy, holy, holy. It means he's pure, pure, pure. It means he's sinless, sinless, sinless. God places a premium on sinlessness. God places a premium on walking in purity and holiness. Men don't, men don't. They, 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 they rather want to say, no, 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 no. Huh, shit, come on. How can you say, talk about sinlessness? I mean, sin is such a powerful, potent influence upon all, all of our lives. Well, it's just demonism. Yeah, I said it again. It's just demonism. It's just that, it's that, it's that, that, that reign of sin and reign of death that Jesus came to deliver us from, that he is Savior. <laughs> he, 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 he came for announcing the good news of the gospel. The days of your captivity are over. I've come to open up the prison for you. <laughs> I've come to set you free. Free from what? The reign of sin and death. The, 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 uh, being under the authority of demon spirits and demon power. 
to be under the authority of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, that which will ultimately keep you from every good thing. People don't, in this, in this world, under the influence of demon spirits, they don't get it. There's nothing good in sin. There's nothing good there. It, will all, it might have some kind of a little thrill, a little pleasure, but it's going to ultimately end in despair and destruction. And the worst of that despair and that destruction is separation from the Father. He says, my, he says my, my, hands, my arm's not short that I can't reach out and touch you. So I, he's saying, I'm not, going to, I'm not unfaithful to my commitment to you. It's your sins that have separated you from me. And so, of course, when Isaiah's there in the presence of the Lord and all you know, the Lord hit me real strong this morning about supplications, prayer, intercession, and the giving of thanks for all men should be continually being offered. And a one big point, because God would have all men to be saved. Oh, when the church begins to pray, when a church on fire begins to pray in the fire of the Holy Ghost, for a, for a world uh, that is around them. Something is effective about that prayer, that something is powerful about that prayer that has impact. I mean, uh, James says it has an availing effect. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much or it has an impact. It has a, a divine influence. It has a divine uh, draw so that men might be in again to see, to see, to see his glory. As I was reading in Psalms 1 5, so that we might be able to declare his works, <laughs> to see the manifest power, which is only going to begin to take place through the people who have touched heaven and heaven's touched them. You're not going to have a test from the Father on how much information, or how much knowledge you have, how much Bible. Uh, versus you memorize how much doctrinal knowledge you have. <laughs> there is a witness of the Holy Ghost that is supposed to be in our life beginning through this, beginning with this wonderful opportunity to be born of uh, the Spirit, to be born of God, to be born again. To the point of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. To the point of maturing and coming into all the fullness of that wonderful Person, Jesus Christ, being manifested through our lives. That is what's going to make the difference. And as we begin to have supplication and prayer, intercession, giving thanks for all, for all men, what's going to happen is I believe that there is a manifest power and glory of God as it's happened before through such people to where as Isaiah, though he was a covenant child and knew God and was actually an instrument to go and speak God's word, when he, had an in, when he had an encounter with God, he saw himself defiled and unclean because he saw the holiness, holiness, holiness. He saw the purity, purity, purity. You can thank yourself pretty good comparing yourselves with others that are around you. But once you, your, your life is contrasted and compared with Almighty God standing in His throne room, I'm telling you something different is going to happen about you. There's going to be a different nature about you. There's going to be a different humility about you. There's going to be a different impact in your life and effect from your life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't be content and happy with yourself anymore. Uh-uh. You're, uh, you're going to see that you have a great and vast need that you had no concept of, but there standing in his presence, he said, I'm unclean. You are holy, holy, holy. You are pure, pure, pure. And in that purity, all I see myself is unclean. God had a remedy. He sent a seraphim to take a coal from off the altar and touch the lips of the prophet to purge him, to make him pure, to make him clean. Hallelujah. And we have today something far more effective and wonderful. Hallelujah. That's the blood of Jesus. The good news is I don't care what, you've done, what your failures are, what your sins are, and what your issues are. 
Today, the blood of Jesus Christ will break the power of it. The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from your sin and break the stronghold of Satan so he has no right ever again to put upon you those things he's been putting upon you, but yet you can still give him right if you won't hear the word of God and change. If you, if you won't take heed under the, under the doctrine of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're going to still go your own way, though God comes and sets you free through the influence of ministry, you go right back to doing exactly what it was you were doing before. And guess what? You have the same relationship, same hindrances, same ditch, same prison, same being healed back. And then people want to blame it on God. It's not God's fault. You're no different. And no matter how bad you are, you're no different from the best of the people, those who are closest to God. You're no different because through Christ Jesus, he's made of all men, one new man, thus making peace for all who will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and let him come and deliver them from their slavery, from the stronghold and dominion that Satan, the master of sin and iniquity, has over your life. He comes to deliver us. How many times have you been delivered? How many times have you been delivered? How many times? Huh? Yet, and he'll still do it again and again and again and again and again. Working with you, pleading with you, trying to cause you to see. You don't have to live under the influence of demonic power anymore. You don't have to live under the tyrannical reign of sin and death anymore. He's brought you into his life. He's brought you into the very life that belongs to God. It's called eternal life. Just like there is life and there is death. Does anybody have any doubt about that there is life and that there is death? Is there anybody in doubt of their existence right now? Anyone here? You're in doubt of your existence right now. Praise God, most people are sane enough to understand that, right? We have life, and we all know also that there is going to be death. You're going to die one day. You know that there's true, true in reality, there is a death right now. All around us taking place. Funeral homes are making money. Graveyards are filling up. As real as there is a natural life, and a natural death, there is an eternal life and an eternal death. You listen to me. As real, as real, as a, I'm telling you, as much as you don't understand how you got here, this is it, it, equally you don't understand where you're going. And I want to help you understand how you got here, and I want to help you understand where you're going. As real as there is a natural life, there is eternal life. And as real as there is a natural death, there is an eternal death. God made a way for us to be delivered from the power and the authority of death so that we might have life, have it abundantly, have it eternally, have it agelessly, an everlasting life. It's not a life that is just about you living forever. It's the very life of God. It's about a quality of life which produces a quantity of time. People want to think, well, it's the quantity of time that they're interested in. Now, you're not interested in quantity of time because eternal death has a quantity of time as well. So you can see how many people you know is seeking eternal death? Huh? I, I think there's very few people on the earth that we, would, would, that we could find that would actually say they're seeking eternal death. Certainly consciously they wouldn't say that. But yet Paul makes an argument for laying hold on eternal life when he's addressing Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6. He makes an argument for seeking immortality, for seeking eternal life. He makes an argument for the value of setting our heart and our affections upon this light that is in God. 
but, I, and, but, he, but, he, but it's always in the context of this fellowship. It's always in the context of this relationship. But it's important to value because there's a lot of things every day trying to rob you of such a great and wonderful gift. And it's time to sober up and get the gift of discernment for your own life and get, get the word of knowledge for your own life or just get the knowledge of God for your own life because word of knowledge is only used about one time in the Bible, maybe twice. Just the knowledge of God. Get the knowledge of God for your life. Get the wisdom of God for your life. Get the ins insights of God for your life. Because I'm telling you right now, you're, the opportunity that you have is fast running out. Is fast running out. What if you could wake up every morning and see the hourglass of time that's set upon your life? which Father has put bounds and limits upon and only He knows. What if you were able to look at, get up in the morning and look and you can see, oh, no problem, I still got, wow, I still got two-thirds of mine left. Or what if you got up in the morning and you saw, wait a minute, the hourglass of time set upon my life. 90% of it is gone, I have 10% left. What kind of value would you begin to place then upon the things that you're doing with your life, the things that you're seeking, the things that you're pursuing, what kind of sobriety would it bring into your life? What kind of carefulness, what kind of, uh, of, of certainty would it bring into your life? It would do a lot for you to number your days. Do you know how to number your days? Can I tell you how to number your days upon the earth? You got today. Can I help you? You have today. If you are wise, you will number your days and apply your heart to wisdom and seek the Lord. You'll understand that the wisest man that ever lived, that God gave the insight and the ability to be able to search out every matter and understand everything. I heard somebody said, I want to know everything there is to know. Well, that's a lot. God gave him a person an ability to know everything there is to know. And then after he began to experiment, as it were, and investigate, he came to a conclusion and he summarized the whole duty and purpose of man was to fear God, keep the commandments of the Lord. Yeah. Why does everybody got to learn all for themselves? Why does everybody got to go through the, as they say, the whole ball of wax? Why was, why can, why why can't we learn through instruction? Why must we learn through the bit of experience? The bridle of experience. The lash uh, of experience. Because reality of it is, not all men have enough wisdom in the very measure of their life to understand in the end what, what Solomon understood. And they die in their sins having not had enough time to figure it out. But of course, we know that the Lord has put a boundary upon man and limited upon man. Why? Because Father has seen in his wisdom and in his insight. I wish you weren't going to leave. I wish you would stay, but that's okay. You do what you want to do. God's given everybody a will. Everybody has a will. You get to decide in your mind and your thinking what is valuable. And what I am speaking about right now is the most valuable thing that you will ever be able. You could never have enough money to pay for what I'm describing to you and telling you. You never have enough money. You'll never have enough wisdom to figure out those things that I'm declaring to you right now. This is, this is worth more than anything else. You've come into this life and given a privilege and an opportunity to know God and you get to make your choices and you can decide whether or not you're going to spin it based upon your own insights, your own ideas, whether you're going to allow Satan to manipulate you, the God of this world, the spirit of disobedience. And I can just say, I can say it this way and then that way it might be much easier for people to accept just popular opinion. Popular opinion is equivalent spirit of disobedience. Satan's the prince in the power of the air. He's the God of this world. You don't think that sin is idolatry? You don't think that sin is the act of worshiping Satan? Giving yourself over to allegiance to the God of this world? He's contrasted against God. That is idolatry. Anything contrasted against God is idolatry, isn't it? 
Think about all of the uh, idolatry that is going on. I look at people in here today and I can... People that are watching by the web and I can tell you that you're more wealthy, you have more riches, you have more privileges, you have more opportunities than the majority of the people on the planet right now. And yet all you want is more. All you desire is more. And you can get out some complaints about why you should have more and why you want more and all these other things. And some people even have the excuse that they're trying to raise funds for the kingdom of God. And by and large, that's not true. And it's apparent by the things that they're doing with their finances and their money now. <laughs> you know, throw God a tip, give him 10%. Say it's all done. You know what I'm saying to you? Because why? And most people, are, are, are they to blame? I don't know. I don't know. Because people are so influenced by leaders and so influenced by popular opinion. They do. They could they help themselves that they got themselves under the burden of such a huge mortgage and, and, and all of the car payment and all of the other payment and all the other debt. Can they, you know, what about that? You know, there's not really anything left. All oh, you get finished with all of your debts and all of your payments. What are we going to do now? We're so loaded down with all the stuff, the choices that we've made to serve ourselves. Meanwhile, back at, the, back at the church, we're talking about seeking first the kingdom of God and going all out, out for the things of the Spirit. Well, I'm putting the big heavy on you now, huh? I'm telling you about what draws you in to a, to a whirlwind of demonic influence. So make sure that your mortgage is the blessing from the Lord. And if it is, it won't keep you from God. Make sure that that other debt and that other purpose and that other interest and that other focus and all of these other things that are keeping you out of the meeting. Because I know good and well if there's that many preachers that are not studying the Bible but for the sake of, of, of a sermon, I can recognize that there are very few of God's people who are sitting in, 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 in the church who are opening up the Bible and receiving the word of life that causes them to experience a heavenly realm of divine power and glory rather than just an intellectual, satisfying intellectual itch or a knowledge-based salvation. I hope you're listening to me. I hope you understand the consequences of the decisions you make about what I'm saying. I hope you recognize that the kingdom of God has need of you and there are many things that would hold you back and distract you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ you would say you would rise up with a great cry, with a supplication, with, a, with, a, with prayer and with intercessions. <laughs> And with a giving of things, crying out to God, I pray in Jesus' name, you'll lay hold upon this life that only exists in Christ Jesus because he is the definition of eternal life. That life was manifested. That eternal life, John said, was manifested unto us. And he was talking about in 1 John chapter 1, not about an object. He was talking about the person. He was talking about Christ Jesus. That life, the life of God that was with the Father, that was hidden in God, has been manifested. We've seen it. We've handled it the eternal life that was manifested unto us. He's talking about Jesus. Whew. To lay hold upon him. To say, to be desperate for the, for, to the things of heaven. First and foremost, for the things of heaven to become real to you. Second, to lay hold upon those things that are real. And I think it kind of goes like this. I think that it goes like this. The Lord gives us a revelation so that we have a certain amount of these things that are real to us. And then we pursue that which is real to us. And as we pursue in obedience those things that God has made real to us, he opens up the, our understanding and our ability to see even more so that we can then once again pursue those things that are real to us rather than trying to go sell all that we have to buy a, a, a field that has a treasure it and we've never seen the field or to go buy a pearl of great price and we've never seen the pearl. <laughs> and there's all other kinds of ambitions and uh, uh, other kinds of influences and ideas mixed in. Oh, 
But I'll tell you, dear people, what happens when we begin to set our heart to seek the Lord? What happens when not a discipline, something greater than, than a discipline begins to take place? A surrender where you're not your own man anymore. You're not your own women, woman anymore. You don't live to please yourself, but you live to please him who purchased you, who called you, who elected you. You live, therefore, to be built up with the word. You live to, every day to give yourself over to learning how to talk to the Father so the Father can talk through you. It isn't about your convenience anymore. It isn't about when you find opportunity within the framework of all the things that you have on your plate. Hello. Good morning. Or maybe it's good afternoon. All the stuff you're doing. No. Nah. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, boss, don't pray. Quit being so, so influenced by you. Because if you're too influenced by you, you're going to be disappointed most of the time. At least I would be if I were you. You with me? But what happens when it ain't about you? Your life isn't about you anymore. What happens when you quit living to please yourself and now you live for Christ Jesus? A life that was given to you as a gift. The gift of life. You've got a gift. It's a treasure to you. It's precious to you. It's the very life of God. And you're living that life now. I'm not living my own life. I'm learning, I'm learning to live this life that was given to me as a gift. The gift of God. The gift of eternal life. The gift of the life of the Spirit. I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning all about these things that were hidden from me. That, were, that I was imprisoned against. That I was held back from. By the prince of the power of the air. The God of this world. The Jesus. Jesus Christ as the Savior came and delivered me from when I called upon his name. And now all of a sudden, I began to value that more than anything else. And I want those things more than anything else. And they're so real to me, I begin to cry out to God for them. Oh God, send your fire now. Send your glory now. Lord, let your glorious presence so fill me, so overwhelm me, so take full control of my life that there's nothing else about me revealed but you. And in that, Papa starts showing you about how you serve yourself any good. And you can either ignore it or you can go, Father, thank you for showing me that. I'm not going to allow that anymore. He begins to show you the compromises in your life. How many of you know how God will show you the compromises that are in your life? How many of you God, know God will lay heavy upon your life the sin that you would allow? How many of you know that? Hey, guess what? You didn't discover that. That's not some guilty conscience. That's the spirit of the living God. But so many people don't know how to take a hold of the power of God and move past that first revelation. They constantly allow the weight and the sin to so easily beset them and hold them back from running this race, this place of apprehending and taking a hold of all that God has provided freely for us. Oh, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your ears will be open to hear, your eyes to see, your heart to understand that a change will come into your life that you recognize that you're not your own. You stop living for yourself. You'll understand that the anointing is the measure of your relationship. God needs anointed people. And for people to just sit back and say, oh, Father, it's all up to you. I'll just be whatever you want me to be is nonsense. That's a lie. That's false humility. I'll be whatever you. This is not que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. Huh? The future is not ours to see. I do mean people in church singing that song. In their lives. He's very made very well known to us what he wants us to be, what he's purposed us to be, what he's called us to be in Christ Jesus. He's made it very clear who we are to him, what we are to the world, that we salt, that we light, that we as ambassadors were sent by him, ministering in his stead, filled with his glory, filled with his power to do his works and greater works. The idea, the notion, oh, I'm just going to sit around, let whatever happens, happens. Nonsense. Lies. Deception. Stealing from your heart, hunger, and thirsting. Huh? And of course, 
God and His mercy and the Spirit of the Son that is within us that makes sin exceeding sinful. I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Ghost makes sin more exceeding sinful than the law ever did. <laughs> Pleading with us. If we're not careful and we don't have discernment and we don't have knowledge and understanding, Satan comes right in behind that and tries to take advantage of us because he's already got an open door. So where he was able to pull you into his lust, now he's able to beat you with his rod and stick of condemnation. When all God wants you to do is fall down on your knees, repent, cry out for strength and ability to be an overcomer, <laughs> to learn how to overcome, <laughs> to be a conqueror, this, this, to be a young man. I write into young men because the word of God abides in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want everybody in this place to come to know what I know in Christ Jesus and more. But what I know in Christ Jesus is I open up the Bible. I don't care where I'm at. I open up the Bible. I begin to read. I don't care where I start reading. I can read and I can start reading in Revelation. I can start reading in Genesis. I can start reading the names of the, of, the, of the people in the tribes and numbers. And it will not be long until the manifest presence of God goes up to an entirely another manifest presence because Father's interested in my communion and my fellowship with Him. If I, oh, don't matter where I'm, I'm, I'm at, if I lift my hands towards heaven, I'll immediately begin to I'll be overwhelmed with a divine glory and presence of the living God. God has this for all men. I can tell you right now, uh, you can see and understand, I've stood here for 31 years faithfully doing these things that God has given me to do. This isn't something this was born out of some idea last week. This isn't some, I'm not, I'm not ministering to you a message I downloaded from the internet. I'm talking to you out of my fellowship and out of my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that's been through the fire, that continues to be examined in the fire, that it continues to be in, in that, that place where my heart and my will constantly says, oh God, you alone, oh Lord, you alone. She that I seek, Father. She that you. The things that you have is what I want. Uh, out of a relationship with the Lord, the Father will bring you to every good thing that you need. One day, you know, Father takes Abraham up and says, look, look out to, into every dimension, east, west, north, and south. And I believe he was looking beyond just a geographical limitation. I believe he was looking as far as to the day of the Lord Jesus and beyond. Jesus said, Abraham saw my day <laughs> and he rejoiced. I know that Abraham saw his day when he was there offering his only begotten son, his, only, his firstborn son. Could you take the whistle out of it? We'd love you for it. Of course, we'll love you anyways, but we'll just love you more. Take the whistle. <laughs> he saw that. He saw Christ Jesus on that day when he offered his son, the son, of his, the son that he loved, his only begotten son, in the sense of his son with Sarah. On the altar, but I believe when the Lord is showing him, because he's willing to go all the way with the Father, I believe the Lord was showing him the east, the west, the north, the south, the full dimension of the scope of the worlds that are to come. Because that's what Paul said in Romans chapter 4. He saw the worlds. God made him an heir of the worlds. Come on, man. What you, you come on, what you gonna sell? What you sell him out for? What, 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 are you giving, what are you giving your divine opportunity in the life of God exchange for? Look at follow Abraham's faith. If you can't follow anybody else's faith, look at what he was able to lay hold on because he's willing to walk with God. <laughs> and he didn't, have, he didn't really have available, you know, what everybody has available to them. But he, he left everything. He left his inheritance from his dad and his grandpa and his great-grandpa. They all had it right there in her. He left being set up with land. He left all of these things. But what God had for him, he couldn't. He wasn't able to receive it. He couldn't receive it where he lived. He had to go to the place that God would show him, a place separated so that he would ultimately be first, the first one who would be called Ivri, the one who stepped over onto the other side. That's what Ivri means, to step over onto the other side. He was the first one who stepped over onto the other side, that other side that Christ Jesus has now brought us into, the other side of the world, from the world over into the kingdom of God. He's the first Ivri, the one first to step over. 
Christ Jesus is Christ Jesus is the door to lead us all in to Abraham's faith, to the faith which is the faith of Christ. Amazing, isn't it? That one man, out of his relationship with God and his willingness to do whatever God asked, to sacrifice everything, to leave everything behind, not to value anything more important, not to try to hold on to a security in this life with basically both hands and try to get a toe around the security in the kingdom of God, because that's about what it's like. And just what happens if you lose both hands and you're hanging on by a toe? You're going to slip. All right, do you understand that? Do we need to be more graphic with it? Uh, it would be pretty good if you were doing a Tarzan and had one arm on one hand on, on heaven, one hand on the world. But I doubt there's very few people that are fully committed that way. <laughs> I'm afraid that it's more like two hands on this life in this world. The life world we don't like to put it we don't like to believe that that your life in this world Jesus said you must hate but yet we got both hands on it our life in this world my paycheck where's our money going to come from where's our food going to come from how about our job what do they think over there at the church we're supposed to give all of our money into the kingdom what on earth are they thinking what are they doing with that money anyways now all that is is a Judas spirit. That's all it is is a Judas spirit. Judas always wondering what they're going to do with money. Huh? What you do with that money? That hey, that could have been sold, <laughs> and, that, and instead of being poured out on Jesus, and, and it could have it could have gotten a, a, a lot of a lot of value out of it. And the money could have been given to the poor. He didn't care nothing about the poor. He cared about his pocketbook. That's what Jesus said. So I know. That is accurate. Hallelujah. And so if it was true for Jew, Judas, and we are all a bunch of lookalikes and act-alikes, then it's true for anybody else who does the same thing. Are you listening to me? I have knowledge. I have wisdom and I have discernment because the Word of God gave it to me. And it's available to you as well. All you got to do is look and see. And first and foremost, before you ever get to oh, really see, you've got to do... Um, because God retains all rights to revelation and the more obedient you will be, the more you'll get to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, dear people. You'll have heaven if you'll get rid of the leaven. I should say that again. Maybe I should say it a little softer, milder, sweeter. Get rid of the leaven, you'll have heaven. Get rid of the compromise and the sin. See, for me, to do anything less than give it all is sin. For me to hold on to my own pr preservation, to do my, I know exactly what my life would look like if I wasn't following Jesus. I know exactly what, my, I know exactly what I'd be doing. <laughs> do you have such a contrast? Do you know exactly what you would be doing if you weren't following Jesus with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, giving it all up for him? Do you know what you would be doing? If you don't, you're probably not giving it all up for him. Do you got yourself an evaluation point? We're looking for truth. We're looking for truth. See, the church is the pillar it's the, both the pillar and foundation of the truth. The Holy Ghost has come to manifest truth. What is truth? It's the reality of what's going on. What influences us that keeps us from being able to understand really what's going on? It's called deception. Where does deception come from? Popular opinion. What's that? Spirit of disobedience. The influences of the prince and the power of the atmosphere. You don't think he has power? He's got power. So I thought Jesus defeated him. 2,000 years ago. Yes, he did. But he doesn't believe it. Do you believe it? Because I see a lot of people giving Satan power over their lives, so therefore they believe that Satan still has power. Does that make sense? Yes. If he can influence you, then he's still got some power, doesn't he? 
But oh, what happens when you find your life hidden in Christ Jesus? Oh, well, then you discover that Jesus really indeed stripped him of all power and all authority. Amen. And you can be a living witness of it. You can be a living witness of the Satan's sure defeat at Calvary. You can be a living witness of this life that God, this resurrection life that God has brought to us at the day that Jesus rose up from the dead, of which this day is the anniversary of. And every Sunday is the anniversary of it. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Every Sunday is the anniversary of something great that happened in the kingdom of God. Yes. In fact, every day is an anniversary of something great that happened in the kingdom of God somewhere at some time over the past 6,000 years. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For us, Monday is Miracle Monday. We've been saying Monday's Miracle Monday for a long time. We live. Mondays are miracle days. Tuesdays are tongues of fire Tuesdays. Every day has a divine purpose for us. We live in that divine purpose. Wonderful works Wednesdays. You would not know how many miracles have taken place for us on Monday. How many great expressions of glorious tongues of fire on Tuesdays. How many wonderful works have happened on Wednesdays. I mean, how many thanksgivings have taken place on Thursdays because we've given ourselves faithfully. It wasn't a fad. It wasn't a passing thing. It was something we heard from heaven and we treasured it because we heard it right from the master's mouth and we so desire to live in heaven to please him to do it his way to get his results that we just don't take it as some notes that we lost within the framework of all of our busyness oh what happens when the word of God becomes precious and meaningful because we so sock full of information and then just with an emphasis on the socked full Saturated with the opinions and the knowledge of men. Self-interest, self-will, call it God's word and revelation. Give me a break. God's word and revelation is all contained in the complete works of God. Amen. How many of you have the complete works of God? How many of you have the complete works of God in your library? Amen. If you don't have the complete works of God in your library, we're happy to make sure that you get it before you leave here today. It's complete works of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know people who have vast libraries filled with the ori some original prints of stuff dating back to the 5th century. Huh? Everybody's complete works. And on that's their boast. You complete in Jesus. You complete in God. Be the household of faith in the house of God. Raised up by God for a divine purpose for right now, for right now, for right. I said for right now. And Satan knows that he'll fight with all his power against you until the day you realize that he was defeated at Calvary's cross and who you are to the day that you're willing to obey and abandon all for the sake of the call. When you be willing to say, okay, Lord, you said leave everything. Everybody I know that left everything got something from heaven special. Everybody that stayed at home didn't get much more than a shout, a hallelujah, praise God, and I'm on my way to heaven. And a finger pointing, accusation and criticism against the pastor and everybody else because they unhappy and, and, and not full of joy because they're not obedient to the word of God. And so they got to be unhappy about everything and everyone, including themselves. Terrible life to live. Why waste your life? When you've been given eternal life and you've been given a tr rich treasure, when you've been given such a gift, when you've been given such a gift, what do you dream of? What do you dream of? I mean, when you wake up, what do you dream of? Can I tell you what I dream of? Can I tell you what I dream of at night, what I dream of in the morning, what I think about through the day? Can I tell you what it is? It's a, it's a presence of God so powerful that anybody who's oppressed falls down overwhelmed with the glory in the meeting. Huh? Wherever, wherever we go, the fire of God falls with Holy Ghost conviction and revelation of God's love and grace. Where the blind see, the deaf hear, the crippled walk, 
where this nation has changed, where there's, where there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people coming, to, coming into the kingdom, coming to Jesus, and only Jesus is seen. I dream of it. I dream of it. It's the inspiration for my prayer meeting, for my prayer time. I dream of it. What are you dreaming of? What are you dreaming of? What are you dreaming of? What's your vision for the future? What is it that you pursue with all your heart? What is meaningful? What is number one on your objectives right now? I hear people say, well, when I get this done and I get that done, I get the other thing done, then I'm going to get after this thing in God. No, you're not. Because Satan's going to make sure that you're never going to get one done, two done, or three done. And if you do get one done, two done, three done, there's going to be five, six, and seven that you forgot about. And Jesus is going to always get prioritized. Obeying God, leaving it all for the sake of the cause, always going to get prioritized. Here's what the Lord said to me this morning. I'm read to you. First Peter chapter four. Open your Bibles there. For judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if it begin with us, what then shall be the end for those who obey not the gospel? I want you, can you see that? Can you, is everybody there? Can you see that? What is it, verse 17? Is it, huh? Huh? Pardon? Can you see that? Does everybody see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? That's what Peter was saying in his day. That was the message. That's the message of the Lord Jesus Christ for that day, for every day, and especially to this day. And never a time has there been a greater need for the people of God to hear it because I'm going to tell you, I can take you back to the history of the church and I can show you time and time again where the church became backslidden, where the church became lukewarm, where the church became indifferent, where the church became filled with itself, seeking its own purpose, filled with its own lust, and judgment fell. The scripture says, judge yourself and you won't have to be judged, but if you're judged of God, then you chase unto the Lord. Any good. So that you won't be condemned with the world, but I'm going to tell you right now, chastening, chastening is quite an event. Jesus said you've got, to, you've got to lose your life. What did it profit you if you gained the whole world and lose your own soul? And then he put it in this description. He, he defined it like this. He defined it like this. In the call for us to lose our life, to deny ourselves and take up our cross every day and follow him, he put it in this description. He, he concluded it like this. If you're ashamed of me and my words, if you're ashamed of the gospel, if you're ashamed of the call, the purpose for why you were saved, born again, the purpose for why you were baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire to be able to enjoy living in heaven, if you're ashamed of that, <laughs> then I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and the holy angels. We're going to have to hear this now. Do you know what it means to obey the gospel? I address you now. I address you now. I address all you people who stay at home and, and you watch the meetings on the web. I address all you people who you prioritize your job. You can't come to the meeting. You can't come to the meeting because your job, I address you. Because all you're doing is you're setting yourself up for Satan to be able to deceive you. And that's why you cannot cease from sin. That's why you don't know how to walk in the Spirit. That's why you've not laid hold on the power of God. That's why there's not been advances and maturation in your life. That's why the influence that God purposed for you to have is unrealized. Oh, I feel the anointing. Feel the anointing? See, I feel this powerful mantle of heaven upon me. Why? I'm speaking from the heart of the Father. I feel the same kind of anointing on me right now as I feel when I read the Bible. Same kind of mantle of heaven, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. 
it must begin. Somebody said, well, you said that last year. Well, you know what? It's God's mercy and grace that gave you one more year to get it right. So you ought to be rejoicing and getting, giving thanks. Huh? <laughs> God's mercy said, let me plead with him one more year. Let me dig around it one more year. Let me, dig, let me fertilize it one more year. Let, give, me, give, me, give me just give me another year with it. And perhaps it, perhaps it shall bear fruit. Perhaps it shall bear fruit. Perhaps. God's got a great purpose for you. God's got a great call. Called you, chose you, and elected you to bring forth fruit. The fruit that he wants you to bring forth. Such a relationship with the Father that whatever you ask, he'll do it. Okay? Let's get on with your program in God. With it in the sense of it being not your program, but God's defined plan for your life. But that's become your program. Where you don't live for yourself no more. You live for him who died for you, who rose again, who sinned into heaven, seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, expect until his enemies be made his footstool. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you that there's a people in here that want to be able to have a greater impact in their generation and their time a greater influence. And that impact and that influence being your manifest presence, your glory revealed through their life. The same way that it was revealed through Jesus' life. The same way that it's revealed through anybody's life who's taken a hold upon you. Father, may we see people that are raised up who know how to live in divine health. Who know how to live in divine blessings. Who know how to li live in divine provision. Who know how to live in your presence, oh God, who know how to speak a word of life, to speak the word of faith, and it happens, oh God, who know how to speak out of the realms of the Spirit, enriched with all the words of life and utterances of the Holy Ghost. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that every person in this place will begin to value that. Uh, they begin to value that gift that you gave. They begin to value that life that you provided. Father, we ask you to forgive us for living our own life. Spending 14 hours a day for ourselves and don't have time to spend an hour with you. called us to live our lives as a living sacrifice and yet we live for our self-interest and point fingers of accusation against those who call us out for the wrongdoing. Let me tell you this. Satan will do everything he possibly can to discredit me and anybody like me in your mind. Because as soon as he can discredit the person that's speaking the word of God to you, then you can go on justifying yourself in your unrighteousness. Justifying yourself in a life that is not conformed to the image of the Son. That is not what God gave to us when he gave us this gift. So beware. Beware. You know, when I take on certain things like I did last Sunday night. And I start dealing with the deceptions that are going on, running interference, popular opinions, running interference against the catching away and the resurrection. Whew. Somebody said, don't stir the hornet's nest. That's a good thing I'm protected against the hornets. Because boy, does it rise up. Satan and demon powers themselves come out against us to try to intimidate us, to stop us. No, no, they don't even, they, they bypass using men at that juncture. They're like, we're going to kill you now. You're messing with our program. I love messing with their program. I pray that more people will kick in here now. Step up.
okay? So not just one, two, three, four people on the earth messing with Satan's program while everybody else is going to church. Should I should have said that again. <laughs> Jesus is calling you. He wants you to come into the kingdom. He wants to give you life. He wants to save you from your prison. If you've not called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've not been born of the Spirit, if you've not had an experience with God to where now the Holy Ghost, God himself, lives in you and you live in him, then you're in a prison. It's a prison of death. That death goes on forever. There's one way of escape. Christ Jesus came for the sole purpose of opening up those prison doors to set you free. No one else came for that. No one else did that for you. Christ Jesus alone did that for you. Against all of the popular opinion, against all of the ideas that are being suggested in your schoolroom, in your classroom, in your business place, in the play place. God came, became flesh to die for your sins at Calvary's cross and he beckons you and calls you to come right now. Christ Jesus offered up his soul so that he might win you because Father's so interested in you. Everyone, the most vile Scythian interested, wants them, loves them. I hear people say all the time, oh, well, he's such a good person. He, he doesn't know the Lord, but he's such a good person. Yeah, that's why Jesus died. So that that could, good person could come to know the Lord. Oh, he's such an evil person. That's why Jesus died. So that that evil person could come to know the Lord. Because Jesus valued that wicked person's life more and precious than his own. We don't know the love of God as we want. The only way you can is to do more than just have visiting rights. To do more than just have access rights. But in surrender to live in him. <laughs> Let him live in you. Every time you give yourself to sin, he's saying, I want to live in you. Why don't you want me to? Why won't you let me? Every time you give yourself to things of this world, he's saying, I love you. I want you to be with me. Why do you go after the world? There's nothing there but death. There's nothing there but destruction. Come over here. Let me take care of you. Let me protect you. Let me keep you. He's calling you, will you come? He's calling you, will you come? He's giving you his blood so that every sin can be erased. He's giving you the Holy Ghost so that you can actually purge out of your thinking and erase from your mind every vile and evil work. Every unholy thing can be forgotten, erased, removed, have no influence. Every discouragement, every disaster. Oh, can you come? Would you come? Every bad thing, every sorrow, he'll wipe away every tear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama, he'll bind up that which is broken on the inside of you. He'll fix you and make you whole. You'll be complete in him. He'll be yours. You'll be his. Won't you come? Won't you come live in this life, this abundant life? Won't you come? Everybody would just stand with me. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Jesus, he's calling you. Won't you come? Christ Jesus is calling you. Won't you come? You say, what well, about my wife? But my husband? But my children? But my job? Jesus is calling you. Won't you come? But my house, but my land, but my stocks, but my opportunities. Jesus is calling you, won't you come?
You can't take your house with you. Can't take your stocks with you. Can't take your jobs with you. The Lord's not going to look at your checkbook and your bank account and say, oh, wow, yeah, you just, you did, you lived the life that I called you to live. Jesus is calling you. Why don't you come? I mean, it's so right when the songwriter said, softly and tenderly. That's him. Softly and tenderly calling every day. Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling all sinners, all backsliders, all those who want to do it their own way, all those who said that cares this life, deceitfulness of riches, pleasure of this world, my job, my mortgage, my land, my stuff. House of God? House? Oh, the Lord understands. He understands. He's a loving God. He understands. Yeah, he does understand. There's an ark of safety and he is it. And you're not coming in. That's what we understand. There's a place for you to be strengthened so you'll be able to stand against the forces of hell. But somehow, other things were more important. Jesus is calling you. He stretches forth his hands calling you. Will you come? Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Will you come? Calling for you and for me. There on the portal. He's waiting and watching. Watching all for every sinner to come home. You know, the other night I was standing in, it's Friday night, and I was standing up there on the second floor of the building, and I wanted to get on with the meeting. I wanted to get on with the things that the Lord laid in my heart to do. And I seen people that were still coming. And I could just hear the Lord saying, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. There's more that's supposed to be a part of this that I'm getting ready to do. I want to use them. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them to resign themselves from their own life. I'm waiting for them to resign themselves from their own understanding. People want to pray the way they think they should pray, speak the way they want to think that they should speak, interact with others the way they think that they should interact. Jesus defined all of those things for us. The Holy Ghost has come to show us how to do it as Jesus defined it. And yet, yet, yet we persist to do it our own way and say we are just and say we are right because we've been going to church for 200 years. Because we gave 9% of our money to the missions and 1% to the church or whatever the statistics were. Jesus is calling you. Will you come? Softly and tenderly. Would you come? Jesus is dealing with hearts here right now. Jesus is dealing with hearts here right now. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Calling you. I'm just going to wait just a few more minutes. I'm wrestling for some of you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Those of you standing there in your chairs certainly. I know that you believe that you have forsaken everything for him.
But I want you to understand obedience to the gospel, to obey the gospel, is absolutely essential to be defined properly. in your life. And I just want to define it for you like this. To now live the life of Jesus. To live what he lived for. To deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him to do the will of the Father. To live for him. Father, thank you for the anointing. Everybody that's up here, just come stand up here with me. Everybody that's up here, just come stand close to me. Come, just come stand up here. And just, just come stand over here. You know, it's so good to just keep a tender heart before the Lord. Father, I thank you right now that everything about the life of those standing here right now. We would be so radically changed. Everything about their walk with you, everything about the knowledge of you, everything about the way that they've lived out their life. Lord, each person standing here right now, they're willing to let everything be conformed, Lord Jesus. To your image. There ain't no become, there's no more holding back anything. Father, I thank you that this is true also for everybody standing in this place right now, that no one would be left out of this. Father, I thank you for the many that stand here today who have faithfully been walking with you and doing those things, oh God, that only the Holy Ghost can show us how to do. I just want everybody... I just want you to raise your hands towards heaven right now. Let the Lord touch you. Let him. He loves you so much. Let him fill you up. Let him fill you up. Let him fill you up. So easy. So easy to get the Father to respond to us. All we have to say is Jesus. So easy. But I can tell you this. He's hoping that you then will respond to him after that you say that. God has offered the ability for us to change. He's given us the power of repentance so that we won't be the same. He's given us the power of change so that we may be different. That we don't leave this place today the way that we came in. But with rather... An absolute consecration and surrender to fellowship with him. Father, thank you for the anointing right now. Thank you for the anointing right now. Thank you for the anointing. Father, I thank you that in this, from this day forward, Joseph is going to live a life to take a hold of you, God. So that he can witness of you and of your resurrection and of your life and of your power. To every person that you bring him in contact with. Not by just by words. Because Lord we know that the kingdom of God. Is manifested by the Holy Spirit. And by demonstration of the spirit and power. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now in Jesus name. Right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that's held you back. Everything that stood in the way. Removes itself from you now in Jesus' name. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, the consecrating spirit, the setting apart spirit, the empowering spirit of the living God. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Lord, let there be holy emotions in this life. Let there be rivers of God in this life. I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus for your glory. Your fire right here in this life, oh God. 
Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. See Parataya. Right now in Jesus' name. See Parataya. Right now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the anointing. Sia Rabba Mamikita Inas. Yer of Mandagliste. Yarastung Ligna Niva. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Man's the etiquette. Not to power of I. Me ever if it is. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you for signs and wonders and miracles demonstrated through this life. E pada stone brundine and ink manana do prosto. Based to paya. Baptized right now by the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Baptized in His presence. Just let, you, just let your hands towards heaven. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the anointing. Just keep them up there. Power of God's falling. Just keep them up there. Power of God's falling. Keep them up there. Mind the master. The power of God's falling. Anointing of the Holy Ghost is falling. Just keep your hands up there. Zumbling at me. Father, God has apprehended you for a purpose. He's not going to let go of you. He's not going to change his mind. He's just waiting for everybody to fully cooperate. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Now, in the name of the living God, in Jesus' mighty name, everything changes right now. I command it so in Jesus' name. The power of the living God, the power and the working of the Spirit of Holiness. Right now in the name of Jesus. Renouncing everything that is unlike God to take a hold of everything that is like God. In Jesus' name. Vista Paranost, Vista Paranoste, Vista Paraneste, Malocanane, Malacusaparade, Malabacatisti, Vista Paranosa Tain, Vista Paranosa. Hold nothing back from him, for he will hold nothing back from you. People have known plenty of evidence of what it looks like to live fully for this world and to find all the gain that this world could have and all the pleasure that this world could have. And there's been very little witness, very few witness of what it, likes, what it looks like to live fully for the kingdom of God and to have all that Christ Jesus has given. It costs you. Simple obedience, that's what it costs you. Simple obedience. I'm going to say this to every person in here, and there's people watching on the web and watching by YouTube. You will serve someone. 
People say, well, I don't want to serve God because I don't really think that it, the things that you're saying are true and the things that the Bible has to say are true. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you then by default will serve Satan and he hates you. He's a ruthless taskmaster. You're not going to be able to just sh shrug this off because in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break the power and the stronghold of deception so that you may see who you serve, that your master may be revealed to you for who he really is. People think, well, I'll just, I'm not serving anybody. I'm just serving myself. I'm doing what I think's right in my own eyes. No, you're not. Unless you've brought, been brought into the freedom and the liberty to serve God out of your own heart and free will. You under the yoke of slavery and the dominion of the power of sin and death. And be certain of this. One day, as surely as life was brought to you and you came into this world, one day death will come to claim you. At that day, you will have a full witness as to whether or not death has power over you or not. And the Lord made it very clear in his address in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14 when he described and declared, this is the second death. And he said, blessed and holy are those who have part in the first res resurrection for upon them the second death hath no power. He described all of those whom the second death had power over or the eternal death. And it was everybody who continued to live a life that this is described by deeds that are unlike God. The deeds that are like their father, the devil, Satan. The deeds of iniquity. I'll tell you right now. I'm going to tell you the sting of death. The sting of death is sin. If you have sin going on in your life, death will sting you. And it will sting you forever. It's time that the fear of God once again return to the house of God. It's time that judgment, the judgments of the Lord be manifested in his house. It's time. It is time. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that every yoke of sin, that every yoke of slavery, that every yoke of resistance, that every yoke of addiction and every yoke of wrongdoing. Be broken now in Jesus' name. That every person in this place will understand how to enter into the ark of safety. That ark of safety being entering into your life, Lord Jesus, to come and live and abide and dwell in you. I tell you right now, the gangplank is down. The ark of safety has been built. The door is open. God, Christ Jesus, is calling every kind of all kinds of every creatures upon the face of the earth. He's placed within their hearts to come. Not just a few, not just one or two of every kind, but all men. But I tell you right now, hell will be extremely hot for those who will listen to me preach. Hell will be extremely hot for those who sit in the church meetings, hearing the anointed servants of the Lord declare the right way, and yet they chose their own way, saying that they, they were right. False prophets are as they always were, saying to the people who need to get right, oh no, you're okay.
Hear the Spirit of the Lord. Hear the call of God. Receive right now those things which God freely has given. Don't wait. Don't wait till later. Don't wait till later. Don't wait till later. Don't wait. Wait, do, and don't wait any longer. Let the joy unspeakable fill you. Don't wait any longer. Let the love of God, which passes knowledge, overwhelm you. Don't wait any longer. Let the peace that passes understanding take hold of you. Let the rivers of God come gushing forth through you. Let the strengthening power of the living God be that for which you live. This wonderful realm of His presence. Don't second guess. Don't question. Surrender. Don't divide. Don't separate. Don't investigate. Surrender. Just surrender right now. Just yield yourself. Just yield yourself. Just yield yourself to Him. You don't really have to do much. It's really something that you do with your heart more than you do with every, anything else. And then, and then the heart receives and then the expressions of the Holy Ghost come out. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Just yield. A surrendered heart is a yielded heart. God, the Holy Ghost will come and fill you. The power of God will overwhelm you. The glory of heaven will be seen through your life. Just yield, my mom and daughter. Don't wonder. Don't stoop at the tomb and wonder. Don't second guess. Just yield. Just yield. Yield, yield, yield. Just yield. <laughs> Just yield. Yield. Just yield, yield, yield. Now, those of you having a hard time yielding, just renounce the world. Renounce sin. Renounce those things that would stand between you and God. And then watch, watch how the yielder works. The yielder will work better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I, just, just begin to talk to him. Just let him know that you're, you're, you belong to him. You are his. He is yours. And watch what happens to the yielder. The yielder will begin to work better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Just yield yourself to him. <laughs> Just yield, yield, yield. Yield yourself to Jesus. Listen, dear people, if religion, if religion and religious observance was what Father wanted, there would have been no need for Jesus to come. Because there was plenty of religion within the first covenant. If it was 
that which men could do out of their own strength and their ability. There was no need for Jesus to come. Because all of the keeping of the law, all of the rigorous, rigorous service, you're not talking about people who are going out committing adultery and fornication and doing all kinds of iniquity on a daily basis kind of thing. You're talking about people who are living and walking moral lives, living morally, some living even godly. Some living even like Zechariah, who said, now being delivered from the hand of our enemies, we may serve God and righteousness and holiness as he prophesied there in Luke chapter 1. Beginning about verse 73. But the Lord wanted us to come into a realm of living by his own life. Living completely delivered and separated from every evil thing. To live by nature and do by nature those things which are contained in the law by the Holy Ghost. Those things that are within the heart of Father by the Spirit of the Lord. You can't leave the meeting without being filled up with the Holy Ghost when there's so much Holy Spirit here. You can't leave the meeting without having your needs met physically and spiritually and even financially because faith takes care of everything. The gift of faith, the working of faith, the operation of the Holy Ghost. Just receive. Just take a hold of God right now. Just take a hold of the things of heaven right now. Just receive. Just receive. Receive strength and empowerment. Receive an overwhelming expression of the power and the glory of God that comes out of you like rivers. Just have Pentecost. Just, 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 just have Pentecost. Just have heaven. Just begin to pour out your heart to the Lord. I know that if I were to dismiss you right now, you'd begin to pour your heart out to one another. Boy, you'd have lots of things to talk about. Roar would grow, begin to increase with every passing minute. We want you to learn how to talk to the Father by the Holy Spirit. We, we, we want you to learn how to just love Him and receive love from Him, bless Him and be blessed by Him. Send your fire, the wind of your spirit. Lord, send your fire, your glory now. Lord, send your fire, the wind of the spirit. Lord, send your fire. Your glory now, Lord, send your fire, wind of your spirit, Lord, send your fire. 
your glory now, oh God, your glory now. Now, I want everybody who do not, does not know how to receive, you were not just at this moment overwhelmed by the presence and the glory of God as, I, as we sang this song. It's something that's still in the future for you. I want you to come right now. I want you to come. Because the Lord doesn't want this to be in the future for you. He wants you to be touched by heaven now. Hallelujah. 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 Just come, just come stand up here and just lift your hands towards heaven. I'm going to tell you this is not going to be in the future. It's going to be now. And as I'll tell you, as you hunger, as you hunger and as you thirst, uh, see, really, really it isn't even so much necessarily even an expression. It's a fellowship. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to just tell you, usually what goes on in a situation like this is that there's just, there's just things that you just got to be willing to obey God in now. Many times, the Father's asked you to do something, you're not willing to do it. Or He's asked you to believe something, you're not willing to believe it. Father, thank you for the anointing. Father, thank you for the anointing. Ma 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 na ma na na ma ni ni. Ma 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 na 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 ma na ni ni. Ma 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 na 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 ma na na ni ni. Ma ma. You can have as much of God as you want right now. Think about it. You, he's not gonna put limits on you. You gonna put limits on him though. You can have as much of him as you want. You can have as much religion as you want. Or you have as much of the Lord as you want. Because he's here and the realms of his divine power and glory are without limit and without measure at this very moment in time. Right now. Not later. Right now. Ibrava, 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 Ibr